I hope you are having a wonderful day. And um, today on the stream, we're going to do an autopsy <laughs> of uh, a paper that I published uh, two years ago in um, MIS Quarterly, which is one of the top journals um, in my field. Uh, really, uh, you know, challenging uh, review process with um, multiple revisions. So actually, I got four review rounds uh, for uh, for this paper, and um, well, it took it took a while. It took several years to um, to to go through the review process and um, and and get published. And what I want to do today is first. I want to show you what um, sort of like um, end, end game Scrivener file looks like because only after, you know, you, you, you go through several iterations for uh, a paper, do you realize how useful and, and amazing uh, Scrivener is and, and, and what are the actual features of Scrivener that uh, are really valuable for these long-term complex research projects, which is, you know, a paper. I'm not, not talking about uh, a million papers. We're talking about like one paper, okay? So, um, so what I want to do is structure of this, this, this project to show you how you can use Scrivener, but also how can you set it up um, and how a Scrivener file sort of like grows and changes throughout the, the project to really help you, um, you know, doing your writing and, and being successful in the revise and resubmit uh, uh, project, okay? So, uh, the, the two key features of Scrivener for a, a, an academic paper are the following. The first is your ability to split your manuscripts into uh, different blocks, different parts, okay? This is important because it allows you to focus on one part of your manuscript at a time. It gives you a sense of progress. It gives you a sense of achievement. It's not like, you know, you have a whole paper to write or I have the whole discussion to write. It's, you know, I have to write the bottom end of the discussion, which in my papers is when I speak to uh, sort of like the broad theory in my field. Whereas in the front end of the discussion, I'm basically making sense of the data at a higher level of analysis. So these are two very different uh, challenges, two de very different research and writing tasks. And, you know, it does feel great when you accomplish a task. It, it matters for motivation. Motivation matters, okay? Progress, a sense of progress matters, okay? So here in this, uh, in this Scriver file, um, Obviously, this is at the end of the project, so I have only major blocks because this was my response to the conditional acceptance letter. So I, but I still don't have like the paper. You know, I have the introduction, the theory, the methods, and so on. Because even when you're writing a conditional, uh, uh, revising for a conditional acceptance, there is still you know some sense of progress, some motivation that you need to to give yourself. But uh, what I want to show you is, you know, how does this look at, at the beginning, right? So you'll see that, you know, for example, in the theory, I have four different parts that I wrote. In the discussion, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different parts that I wrote. Again, because this, this was a difficult paper. This was a challenging paper. So I really needed to split it in this way so that, you know, I could sort of like focus on, on one task at a time, focus on one challenge at a time, work on those materials, on those data, on those interpretations, but also get some sense of motivation that, you know, I had already done something in the discussion that I wasn't struggle with, with, with this big monster. You tell me, well, you know, this is all mind games. Yes, it is mind games. Motivation is mind games. The, the reason why writer procrastinate, writers procrastinate is mind games. It's, it's lack of confidence are overwhelming challenges, right? So this matters for 
productivity, that means how much you write, how quickly you write. It matters for uh, the quality of your writing. Are you, you're just focusing on one part. You don't have to think about the, the whole discussion. But it also matters for your mental health, for your sense that, you know, I have achieved something this week. You know, that you don't have to wait two months to write a, a discussion until you have some sense of achievement. Okay. So, um, so I just want to go through, through, through each of this, this blocks in turn and, and tell you about it. So again, two reasons why Scrivener is super important, super useful for, uh, research papers. One is because it allows you to split your paper into parts and work on one part at a time. Second, because it has this amazing, amazing tool, which is a research folder, which is here where you can keep a bunch of resources that are, let me uh, grab my notes here, a bunch of resources that are just, um, um, you know, important for the, the task you have at hand. Okay. And you can tell me, well, you know, all of these things are in my computer. Yes, they are in your computer, but, um, you know, uh, but having resources at hand matters. It helps you think. It helps you interpret data, interpret uh, uh, the, the literature. Okay. So let's go and, and look at, uh, at the research folder and see what is there. Okay. And how do you organize a Scrivener file? And again, this is a Scrivener file that has, you know, seven years worth of writing on top of it. But, you know, the, the, this, a big part of the structure is there from your first draft. So I just want to go through it with you and show you how I organize the research folder in my, uh, in, uh, for my, uh, screamer file for each paper and why do I do it that way? Okay. And then show you, okay. So how does a, a re the research fo uh, the research folder, uh, grow as your paper develops and changes as your paper develops. Okay. So I have individual notes for each section of the paper. Okay. So here are my notes for the introduction and you'll see, you know, I have like, um, this is basically has all of my notes for this, this, this part of, uh, of the paper scratch, I think are things that I have um, used or, or not. Okay. So this is for the theory section. The method section has nothing because this is a conditional acceptance, the results, discussion, and so on. Okay. Now, what are notes for? I use them for two things. There are two functions of notes. One is for outlining. Okay. So I, I just outline sections of the paper and sometimes I have like outline outlines such as this, but at other times I'll have, um, you know, like longer summaries or, or outlines where I actually don't only have bullet points, but I actually have text. Okay. The, the second thing that I use notes for is, I actually sometimes like write the entire section in the notes. Why? Because, um, a, a lot of procrastination is about insecurity. And so one of the tips that I read many years ago about, uh, being more productive in writing is sometimes when you're stuck, just rehearse writing the discussion rather than write a discussion. Uh, and so my notes actually keep uh, not only a different font, but actually different spacing. So this is a uh, one a single line spacing rather than double line spacing as I do in the text. And this is to really give the idea that, you know, this is a draft, that this is not a real deal, you know, and, and doing this like really gives you permission to just sit down and write. And again, you know, mind games, yes, mind games, but you know, again, writing productivity is about mental games, mental health, 
how you feel, okay? So if for you writing the final version of the discussion is induces anxiety and makes you stop and makes you want to write your sentences perfectly and have the perfect ideas, then just rehearse, you know, I'm just going to sit down and rehearse uh, writing uh, the, you know, the discussion. I'm not, I'm not going to like actually, actually write it. Um, so, so yeah, so th that'll be, you know, that just really helps, helps you uh, churn um, uh, uh, text out. Okay. So these, these are my, are the notes for each section. I will also have review notes. So the, here I basically summarize the review letters and summarize my responses to them. As you see, this is all, all scratch because I've done all of this. It's my way of knowing, okay, I've done, 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 done. Okay. Now, this is also super important because sometimes reviewers are not super nice or just reading the raw review text makes you feel bad. So just summarizing the reviews sort of detaches the emotional part of it. And you're reading something that you wrote, not something that reviewers wrote. Okay. So really helps out, um, really, really helps out um, in doing that. Okay. Now I have notes. I keep my notes separately for each version of the paper. So you'll see here, um, because, you know, this is, you know, a revise and resubmit rather than, uh, rather than conditional acceptance. Then I have like three theory sections three no separate notes for three different parts of theory sections. Same things like for the discussion, right? Four parts in the discussion, you know, because my notes always match my draft structure. So if my draft structure has five parts in the discussion, I'll have five different notes for the discussion. So you see here, there are four parts. So I put zero, one, two, and three. Okay, which are four. Okay, so I also keep all all of my notes in uh, for for the paper. Okay, um, I also use the the research part to keep reading notes, and um, here because it's the um, it, it, it's a conditional acceptance. I don't have reading notes because you know there were just minor changes. But here you can see my reading notes. I have like full on reading notes where I have most of these are our quotes copy pasted from from each paper. So you, you can see it here, right? So I'll, I'll just move, wrap it up to show you. So this is the reference of the paper and then uh, copies. Okay. Um, sometimes I'll have like if there's like a, a key paper, I'll have the the paper in my reading notes. And um, if I you know, if there's, for example, a table that I think is like, this is super important for me to, 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 to have for when I'm writing, I'll just, I'll, I'll just copy paste it from, from the paper itself as well and have it in my reading notes. Okay. And this is, you know, one major advantage of Scrivener is that you have direct access to all of the resources that you need to write. Okay. So for example, in your reading notes, right? What I did before using Scrivener is, you know, I have my, uh, ref reference management software and I just, um, you know, I just annotated the PDFs. And so what I had to do is I had to go back to the PDFs and, and go through, through the notes and so on and so forth. And, you know, and okay, you, you know, you can search and whatever, but here I only have, no, look, I mean, this, this is not very big, right? I mean, this is like 12,000 characters. That's like six pages of double spaced uh, notes. So that's nothing, right? A thousand words, word of notes, thousand words. Yeah, 2000 words of notes. That's nothing. But this is the parts of this paper that I need to think through in my theory section, in my discussion section. This, you know, I could like, you know, I know this where th this table is, what paper is for, but here I have the table, right? So if I am writing the theory section, the discussion section or the theory section, I need this table. The only thing I have to do is, is this, 
Okay, that's that's what I have to do. And you can tell me, yeah, you can go to the 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 the, the, pa the paper and open, you know, a window with uh, with uh, with a table. Yes, I can do that. But here, you know, is it's it's just curated. It's a curated set of 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 documents, of notes, of texts that I need to write my paper. I don't need to go somewhere else. I don't need to remember where this is. I don't even need to remember that I need to look at that table because it's in my reading notes. I know that, you know, there are like five things here. I know that four things. So I know I need to check this out when I'm writing. Okay. So super important access to, to resources that are ready. Okay. Um, same thing with data, right? So my my data, the key data, they're all here, right? Including like scans that I that I need to 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 understand to use, um, you know, in this paper. This paper is about material artifacts. So I basically have one example of each material artifact that people are using so that when I'm writing, when I'm interpreting the data and I and say, OK, let me look, uh, you know, what 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 a post-it note is or what a uh, you know i can go and and, and see here okay, and i get an idea i can open and vivo the, the data will be there you know yes but here you know as i'm writing all of these resources are already at hand i can also because i have one of each here i can also as i when i finish writing my results section i can just go through each of this and, you know, and just do a sanity check. Have I done enough? Have, am, am I respecting and, and, and really using this data to the, you know, to the most of what they can provide, right? And so as I can just like read through my text and have this, these artifacts here and, and really try to make sure that I've done enough in when I in writing up the analysis. Okay. So this is massive that that you have all of this, all of this here, you know, that you can check them carefully. Um, it's massive. And again, yes, you can, you know, you can look it up. But here, it's almost like a to do list, right? So I know I have to go through all of this, right? I don't have you know, and I can could create this list in Envivo. Yes, I could. But here it is in the place that I am using to write. Okay, so I have my notes, I have my data. Then I have my uh, the latest reviews. So this is the the review document that I got from MS Quarterly. And this is my review summary that, that I did. As you can see, like, um, you know, this is like, um, to, to, to uh, 600 words, whereas these are four, seven pages of, of typewritten text. Okay. So again, helps me drop down defenses because I wrote this. This is a to-do list that I wrote myself and it allows me to organize my work a little bit. Okay. Sometimes I'll have for major papers, I'll actually have the papers here on Scrivener for me it just helps. Sometimes I, I just want to check uh, things in the paper. So these, you know, obviously I read much more than this, but um, these, I, I do like to keep some papers in Scrivener so I can uh, check them as I, as I write, okay? And then, you know, this is the, 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 the part. So this, let's say, this is the notes, data, and papers to read including reading notes here. Uh, this is what is there from the uh, in the file from the start. But then this this bottom part here is what how the the screener file grows as as you as you write and revise the paper, you know, so as you get revise and resubmit uh, decisions, right? So I'll have my previous notes. So notes for previous version of the manuscripts, previous reading notes, previous mind maps and notes. Okay. So these are like figures that I do that, that help me think, uh, you know, sometimes these are just pictures of things that I, that are written by hand. 
previous drafts. So this is like the, the, the full text of the, of the paper. Previous manuscripts. These are the PDFs uh, that I sent to the, to, to the journal. Previous reviews. And then something that I have, which I call the graveyard, which are, you know, sometimes I, I change like the theory or discussion section so much. That I think, you know, I may want to keep this if, you know, in because this may be the basis for, for a theory piece, um, you know, so so I just keep that in something I call the graveyard. OK, and that's and this grows uh, as as the project grows. OK, so. Why do I keep all of this stuff, all of the previous versions and so on? Well, because, you know, reviews are not a linear process. Sometimes you, you know, you need to go back to, for example, in a paper that I just submitted for review, um, it's the second round of, re of revisions. In the first round, reviewers told me to take out a figure that I have in the paper. And in the second round, they told me to uh, add a figure to the paper, a figure, not the one I had before. So what I did is I went to my first manuscript, look at the figure and uh, modified it for this version of the paper. So it's also always useful to have this. Sometimes, uh, you know, um, you have ideas that you took out of the paper, but then reviewers actually want you to, to want to see, you know, grab on, on some idea that, you know, you had before. So, you know, okay, so let's go on back to this model and uh, think about it more carefully. So this, you know, it just helps you keep uh, a, a record of your ideas and you'd be surprised. I mean, maybe not because uh, I guess many people uh, watching the stream are actually, um, you know, actually have written papers themselves and, and have revised and resubmits. But you'd be surprised how often you need to, to get back to, to your old ideas and how useful they are. Okay, good. Also, uh, after I finish uh, an empirical paper, I will really make an effort to come up with ideas for theoretical papers that um, are based on, you know, theory sections or discussion sections that I threw away through in the revision process, but I still do think that there are um, good ideas. So here I have, you can see already two sort of outlines for theoretical papers. And um, at this point, they're still part of this file because I want to go back to my uh, reading notes and my mind maps and to my graveyard, but eventually then I'll separate them into, into their own files. Okay. So let's just, uh, you know, wrap up and, uh, talk about this Scrivener autopsy and what are the three plus two things that, <coughs> um, I see as takeaways from this first. Scrivener is amazing because you have all of your writing resources at hand. Okay. You can have a notebook with, with these notes. You can have a, a PD, PDFs with your papers. You can have notes on those PDFs. You have PDFs with the review letters and so on. But here they're all in your Scrivener file, all in your Scrivener file. That means that you can refer to them as you write side by side. You won't forget anything. You have a, cur a curated set of data and readings and notes that you need to use your, uh, on your paper. Okay. Um, second project management. Scrivener is not only uh, useful for complex research projects because it helps you write, it, all, it, it also helps you manage your project. Okay. So when I have, you know, so let's go to the, um, to the drafts. Okay. So when I have, um, a, a draft, right. A, a draft is basically telling me what do I have to do and how much progress have I done? Okay, so I know that I have to do these three things to have the theory, these four things to have the discussion. And in a previous video, I showed you how I use icons, which are here, right? 
I use um, this multiple, in my case, I use multiple colors to identify the progress on a paper. And so I know what I need to work on, what I have already done. And it also, it's motivating and gives me a, a sense of project, uh, of progress. Finally, there's, you know, the third major benefit is that it gives you this, allows you to access your, uh, um, you know, your accumulated knowledge um, uh, uh, when, that you acquire when writing a paper. You know, previous models, previous, previous reading notes, previous versions of this paper. You can refer back to them, use them uh, to think, um, use them to engage in challenges that reviewers pose you in review letters. Everything is there. You can refer back to it. And, you know, you, you, you can see it grow and, and accumulate. OK, now. What other what are the there are two more things that are pluses that are not key benefits of Scrivener, but I, I still think they're pretty useful. The first one is that this is in a single portable file. All of your papers, notes, pictures, scans, review letters, PDFs, every version, every version of every section on the paper, every note, every outline that you've done is in one file. And that one file can be synced to your iPad. It, it can be synced to your iPhone. It can be synced to um, a friend's computer, right? You can do a, a, a Scrivener peel, which, you know, you can access it in, in Dropbox, whatever. It is, you have everything that you need to write a paper with you at all time. You don't need a computer that has access, that has NVivo installed. You don't even need a computer. You can have an iPad. There's no NVivo for iPad or iPhone. Okay, and you can sit down and write. You can sit down and engage with um, uh, with your materials. You don't have to remember to open five files, or you don't have to remember, you know, where are the data, what are the papers that that, that I need to check. No, that is all in Scrivener. You just go through your your five pictures of artifacts. Make sure that you did a good job in the section. This super important, super, super useful. Second, because you have this whole repository. So what I'd advise you to do is once you finish a paper, just just go through, you know, all of your previous versions, especially the theory and the discussion, your notes, um, your your where are they? Um, so your your reading notes um, and your, especially this, your mind maps and, and figures, you know, where is this? Okay, just go through this because there are a lot of jewels here and you can really come up with ideas, especially, you know, maybe less ambitious small, for smaller journal um, um, uh, uh, theoretical pieces. Okay, so I, again, I came up with, with two uh, f uh, f from the specific paper. I haven't written them yet, of course, but, uh, but you know, I've already done a, a little bit of work in them. So you, you, can, you can see the summary for, for this paper. Okay. So you just have one place that allows you to go back to all of your thinking on this paper and pick up these this really valuable nuggets. Okay. So this is a postmortem of, um, of, um, a, a, a published. Uh, a Scrivener piece paper that was done in, in, uh, in Scrivener. And I hope this was helpful to show you how, you know, how a Scrivener file looks like at the end of the project and how it, it was really useful to manage this like really long term complex um, writing projects like most papers are. Okay, hope that was useful for everybody. Um, 